is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. Here with me, my co-host, Michael Riedel from the New York Post. Broadway has a new big budget musical called Fosse. It's a compilation of all the great dances by Bob Fosse. And here to talk about it tonight is the man who is directing it, Richard Maltby Jr., who has also uh, written many lyrics for Broadway shows, including Miss Saigon, and uh, an off-Broadway show, Closer Than Ever, which has always been a favorite of mine. Oh, good, great. And uh, you directed, I believe, and sort of, and conceived, if I'm not mistaken, the great, great review, Ain't Misbehaving, several years ago. I did indeed. Richard, welcome to Theater Talk. Thank you. And joining Richard is a very old and dear friend of ours, Martin Gottfried, who not has that written... Old. <laughs> not, not that old. Not that old, that's right. <laughs> but who has written a great, great biography of Bob Fosse. Gentlemen, to both of you, welcome. Uh, Richard, I describe this as a, as a compilation, which may be the wrong word, of great Fosse dances. What is Fosse exactly? Well, it's, um, it's a show that takes you into Fosse's body of work. I mean, it, if you look at his material, <laughs> I think you can find an extraordinary man working out his life. And uh, it's, uh, it's an extraordinary personal way of doing uh, dance numbers for a show. It is uniquely his. No one else did it. And when you look at it, I think, uh, when you take all the pieces and sort of put them together, I think you see um, um, an artist at work in a way that you never knew <laughs> he, was, he was working. Uh, the Fosse, everyone knows the Fosse style. You know, it's recognizable instantly. You know those, those hats, those fingers and everything. But the moment that, uh, but that style is almost an impediment <laughs> to seeing what he was really doing in the numbers. And they're incredibly human. They're incredibly um, felt. Uh, to perform them, you not only have to be an extraordinary dancer, but you have to be a really good actor um, and, and singer in some cases. Um, it's, um, it's a man's look at the world seen through his, th seen through his dances. Um, and I think, I mean, this is my own uh, prejudice, uh, I think everybody who thinks they know what Fosse was and what he was doing will be surprised. Mm. Is this like a uh, uh, Jerome Robbins Broadway, uh, a, a review of all of Fosse numbers, or is it like Fosse's own dancing? It's, it is, it's, it's um, somewhere between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want to do a um, uh, sort of an, an and then I choreographed show. Um, the, f the Robbins show was brilliant, but it was almost the Robbins Museum. A piece from this show, a piece <coughs> from that show done exactly the way it was done. Um, the, uh, the Fosse shows um, don't, don't uh, lend themselves to that. And, and it didn't seem to be interesting. What was interesting about Jerome Robbins was this incredible range of shows that he worked on and the work that he did within the shows. With Fosse, it seemed to be a much more um, um, personal artistic journey that was, that was uh, uh, worth looking at in, in all this material. And, and so we didn't want to have a narration. We didn't want to have um, a plot, you know, or anybody saying, I did this and then I did that. You can get because audiences are smart, you'll, you'll get the sort of chronology of the show. You'll get the development of this artist. Uh, you'll, um, you'll find out what he was saying about life mm -hmm. in, the, in the course of, of, of it all. Is there enough of, uh, enough of a range, Martin, in his work to make for a whole evening of his dances? Uh, and is maybe just my misconception that it's just the bowler hat and that every Fosse dance seems to be the same thing. Well, not having seen the show yet, I can't. Uh, you know, I don't know what to expect, yeah. but I, when I first heard of it, I thought, I thought I saw all, all these dances in Chicago because they'd added so many that weren't the, in the original show. What's left? But then Richard, I asked Richard that question, and he said they they had found some of uh, you know uh, dances that had been done in, uh, for instance, the Conquering Hero. I was trying to see all of the range of things that he that he had done. Uh, there are ballet moments. There are um, uh, small moments. There are large rock numbers. There. Are, um, there are moments when he was uh, self-critical, uh, when he used himself and started and used a conventional number to, um, to rip apart an emotional complexity. 
um, what I guess what I set out to do to add to to um, what had been done before I joined the show was to push the envelope to find all the things that he did that were far away from the center from what you would expect mm -hmm. so that you could be constantly um, surprised. I was, I mean, basically the show was sort of an expression of my own amazement. Didn't you pull from some of the movie work and some yes, of the TV yes. work? And we we, we constructed, uh, we notated and took down uh, stuff from all that jazz that's never been on the stage. There are television, numbers that were done for television mm -hmm. that have never been done on the stage. I would say almost a third of the show has never been done on the stage. Um, and uh, that's that also helps to to uh, to keep the range, uh, to keep to discover how what he was doing in other mediums that uh, that pushed the emotional envelope further and further away. I think oh. that Bobby would have been pretty grim about this whole thing, actually, because, <laughs> well, uh, only in the sense. No, I mean he would appreciate, it. but uh, and the grim in the sense that I think first of all he would have said without a question in my mind he would have said, wouldn't you know. I would be celebrated only after I died. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. He was a pretty grim guy, though. Really. He, that was his. his well, was he's his just before, just before he died, and, and he did an interview, and and, and someone said, "Well, what uh, you know, uh, what what would you what haven't you had in life? What would you like?" And he said, "I would like one." Kind sentence from the New York Times. He also, now. <laughs> he also <laughs> never had a, a smash hit. You know, even though every show he ever brought into New York up until the last one, big uh, big deal, every show had been a success, which is un, unmatched by anyone else. But not one of them had been a huge success, like a chorus line or Fiddler on the Roof or some or Chicago. Now right. I had to wait till I died for that. Chicago, when it originally opened, was eclipsed by Chorus Line. Absolutely, absolutely. Season. But I think also Bobby would be cynical about being remembered now as a choreographer when he had gone on to do, I mean, as a movie director, I mean, Kazan, no less, he said there are only two directors in Hollywood, as far as I'm concerned, Scorsese and Fosse. Mm -hmm. Fosse yeah. made five movies, three nominated for Academy Awards. Now, that's really pretty amazing. And Horror. when you see them, I mean, whether it's Cabaret, right. which everyone recognizes, or Star 80, which not everyone, these are major movies, yeah, and yet now he's being remembered as why, a why, why do you guys think that is? I mean, he had a big movie career, but we still think of Bob Fosse, we think of Broadway. Well, <laughs> um, I mean that's that's also our choice in the in in the show to look at his dancing. I, I mean, we emphasize the choreography in, in the show, but uh, I must say, as we're, we were working on it, we were emphasizing the directing of all the way through it. Mm -hmm. He is, I mean, you cannot do his numbers without acting them, and you must act them correctly. You must act them with as as much depth as he expected. Um, Big Spender is not an easy number to perform. You have to take this the the collection of women who are going to do that number and have them inhabit an entire yeah. persona yeah. they walk on the stage they are there for 4 minutes they go off and that and they must create an entire character um, that has a past that has uh, an attitude towards life what um, they they've been through the mill i mean you have you have you you have an extraordinarily complex um, background that will inform this Stage number, you know. Is it fair to say that each of uh, all of Fosse's dances are, are like little plays, little one-act plays, or something? There's enough character and story within the dance number to most most of them are. Yes, yeah. most of them are. But I'm but they they but they're not uh, plotted in that sense. I mean, there are numbers, you know, like Sondheim numbers where they really are little stories. Uh, they are certainly character pieces. Um, they don't always have plot development. They don't always end in a different place. But you do have to be a character to play it. What about, Richard, these, uh, these various uh, orgiastic ballets that Bobby was always doing, always getting into trouble with, whether in New Girl in Town or in Yes, uh, are you Chicago. resurrecting some of those that were... Uh, no, or it is true, and Gwen says this all the time. Gwen he, Verdon, who's also Gwen, working on the show. Gwen Verdon, uh, that Bob, Bob loved to push, to push people's buttons. He didn't want to be safe. He didn't want to be... In the conventional, he didn't want to uh, to stay in the in the sort of sentimental expected mode, which meant sex sometimes, mm -hmm. sexuality sometimes, um, and as I said, we 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 
took from uh, all that jazz three numbers that have never been on the stage. They take off with us, which we now only use the the pas de deux because they were the only that was the only part that really worked on the stage. Uh, but it is three extremely s sexual um, duets. But they dressed. Weren't they? They were nude in the movie. They were no. They were topless. Well, top. The girls. Were, one of the girls was topless. Are they topless in Fosse? No, they're not. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to push the envelope that far. Putting, we're not pushing uh, the envelope. In terms of today's Broadway, with the, the, the crucial issue for all of us is w whether there ever going to be any new musicals again. <laughs> w would you call this a revival or a new musical? It seems to be a little bit of both. Well, you know, when you're working on a show, you think of it as new. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think it stands alone by itself, even though it's made up of, of known parts. Um, I believe the impact that you get from the show is the same as you get from um, a, a new show. And in fact, although this is a little secret of mine, uh, I th it's, it's constructed so that you have the feeling that you've seen a book, even though in fact you don't. That is to say there is an emotional drive to it and a, a, uh, there, there, there is a climax, there are a series of climaxes, they build to a bigger climax. There is a, an inherent story. It's a, it's a device that... Um, I think you used it in, clo in, 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 in well, Closer I, Than Ever in a way. I do it in all of them, yeah, but, I, yeah, but, but, but in yeah. particular in Ain't Misbehaving, where if you, you, if you sort of squint at the show, you almost feel like you saw a story, even though and, and, you, and the story is about Fats Waller, and he's never on stage. And this is about Bob Fosse, and he's... I think, and it was, it was our thinking as we were working on it, that, that um, he would be conjured up, that somehow in the course of doing all of this, you would feel that you were in the presence of a person. And in fact, if that were not possible, I don't think it would be an effective stage piece. It would just be a concert. Mm. The, it would be Bob Fosse's Broadway. It would just be Bob Fosse's Broadway, or or an evening of Bob Fosse dances, and that, and you know, no one would ask for their money back. But but a theater piece has to be more than that. It has to be, it it has to be about humanity. It has to be about people. It has to be about something human. And and uh, the thing that f turned me on, that started me on this journey uh, with this material, um, was that I began to see him in the dances. I'd never seen that. I thought I knew him. Uh, Martin, you know his life well. Did he inject his autobiography into, into, his, into his dances, into his choreography? Well, a lot, uh, in lots of his shows, actors uh, had told me when I was doing the research that Bobby wanted him, wanted the actor to play Bobby. For instance, John Rubenstein in Pippin. Or uh, he said, uh, Ben Vereen and I, these two characters were both each side of Bob, the good Bob and the bad Bob. Or uh, the young man in um, a New Girl in Town, we were talking about the Whorehouse Ballet. The young man, you know, Bobby spent his whole youth uh, dancing in strip joints. And the young man, uh, the, the actor who, dancer who was playing the young man in the Whorehouse Ballet said, I knew I was supposed to be the innocent Bob in the Whorehouse. So there were regular times when... You know, I heard you tell a wonderful story that Bob Fosse had essentially a double life in high school, that he was the all-American sports star yes. in high school and then went in, in Chicago well, and worked in strip clubs. That yeah. was his big secret. But the, uh, there wasn't because of uh, salaciousness of no. strip clubs. It was because he was afraid that um, it was uh, dancing was for sissies mm -hmm. and that he wouldn't be a regular guy, you know, and, and, and male, somebody. that everybody would think he was gay if they knew he was dancing, so that was his big secret. And as we know, he certainly was not, um, but <laughs> he, put his, he put his sex life out there for all to see in Star 8, not Star 8, but in, uh, in all that jazz, all that jazz, jazz for, did, for yeah. one thing. Well, and in Pippin as well, there's a, there were three-way, there was uh, a... Oh, there's, yes. There's, but, there's, what, uh, sounds like a fun show to work on. You're working on this <laughs> with Gwen Verdon, his widow, mm -hmm. and Ann Reinking, who was for, for years his girlfriend, mm -hmm. while he was still married to Gwen Verdon. And to me, it's, and we all know this because he, Portrayed it on screen, and and you wrote about it, and not and only that, but he had Anne Ryan King play Anne Ryan King. Anne Ryan King play Anne Ryan King, and yet they all, they these women who has, who've survived him are so committed to his work that they now come together and work with you, and yeah, what's it like having what's it like, uh, what's it like working with the two of them? It's it, it's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery. I mean, you want, one wonders about it, but it, it, but they, it's not only true of them. Virtually any dancer who entered 
Fosse's world never came out alive. I mean, it was like, it <laughs> well, was not, like, uh, I mean, I mean, they, 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 you know, you, I talked to, to, to lots of, of dancers, and the, the impact that he had on them uh, exists now. Uh, you know, and, and it, Richard, I don't think it's just Bob. I think the relationship between dancers and choreographers has al is always a, a very a peculiar one, where you know whether it's Balanchine mm -hmm. or Jack Cole, um, mm -hmm. there is a, there's always an S and M kind of thing. Dancing is such a brutal. I, I don't think any of us could survive mm -hmm. what they have to go through, and yet they do it all for the choreographer. You know, c because literally they cannot take a step. Mm -hmm. Without because, the choreographer, you right, know, so because he, love gets put right into the work, and the man who makes it happen for you, you know, becomes a person that you love in a deep and profound way, whether you have a relationship or not. Um, it it uh, it's it's very complex. I've never I've never taken the time, or rather, dared mm -hmm. to. Um, explore it with, with Gwen Verdon or with Anne Ryan. But it must be interesting, though, since you've said that this is uh, really, in a way, telling the story of, of Bob Fosse, and mm -hmm. these two women were integral to that mm -hmm. story. How just do they get along in the rehearsal hall? I mean, they know his work so well. Are they on the same wavelength? Well, they got or? along when, when Bob was alive, yeah, or right. barely, or when he was dying, and the two of them were there in the hospital. Yeah. How could you imagine that, a wife and a mm -hmm. girlfriend? Yeah. Well, I think I, you know. I think they both came to came to terms with that. That, that that's who Bob was, and uh, you know, um, and they uh, they accepted it. It was sort of the price you paid for being involved with this for being enormous first lady. person. Well, it, you know, it's an interesting <laughs> we, interesting though that the fact that you're the director and they're what are they co well. Co ex lovers, the, co keepers of the flame. Keepers they of they are the keepers of the flame. Well, there 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 are. Uh, this is an odd show in terms of how it was put together. I mean, I, I was brought in to direct a show that is all dance. I'm neither a dancer nor a choreographer. And you didn't want to do it at first, right? I didn't want to do it. Yeah. Well, because, uh, you know, it seemed, it seemed a wonderful thing to do, but, but why? I mean, yeah. it seemed not something that, that had any reason to, to speak to me. And it was only when uh, <laughs> Garth Drabinsky twisted my arm, sent me back to look at the material again, and I began to have that feeling that, that I described earlier when I began to see him in them. And I suddenly thought, and it actually was exactly a parallel to, to how I felt about Fats Waller. Now, I there's thought, no talking in it, right? There's no dialogue? There's no uh, connective dialogue. There's an occasional line here and, and there. And, but there are songs. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Singing. With a, um, with a, well, the, the, you know, if you do Fosse numbers, you have to sing. No, no. Well, you could have you could have numbers that are just dance numbers too. It's true, but th there are more uh, dance, pure dance numbers than in most Fosse shows. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is definitely a lot of singing. Kind of and in fact, uh, and in fact, the 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 the, the, the lyrics. Um, well, because I'm a lyricist, I keep. Do you change having, any? Well, of I keep lyrics? having this demented feeling that people actually listen to lyrics, <laughs> uh, and, and uh, uh, so I. I you, you know, the, the, some of the meaning of the show is in the, the choice of the, of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, um, I believe that you do listen and you, you know that audiences take all that information in and that they put the pieces together. Um, so the lyrics are used, I mean the fact that they are certain songs uh, are, are used from time to time. Um, to, you know, sort of help the organization of the show. I want to ask you both. Um, Martin, you, you brought this point up just a few minutes ago, but it seems to me maybe a distressing one. We have gone through a period where we have revived a lot of old musicals. Now we're reviving the choreography from, from old musicals. Mm -hmm. What has happened to the, to the great director choreographer? I mean, Fosse, Bennett, Robbins, they really seem to be that we're now at the end of that era, I think we can say. It's over. And why is it over? And where's it going to go oh, from well, here? Well, things change. Yeah. You know. yeah. well, why aren't there? But why anymore? did it end? I mean, why didn't they pass it on to someone else? Why didn't Fosse or Bennett uh, because, groom someone to take their place? Because life is is a process of change. You might ask, well, how come we don't have any Gershwins or Kerns or Berlins? Because that was that was then, and this is now. Mm -hmm. This and those kind of Broadway music. And and once people accept that. But, it's it's because nobody has accepted that that we're in this terrible state we're in now where it's just revivals, and Broadway is just being is choking on its own past, uh, and and there's nobody's been given a chance to develop because everybody's kept saying we still want those old musical comedies. Well, mm -hmm. they're just not going to happen. It's, it's it's just over. You've something 
new, uh, I mean, the musical form itself is always viable, but what are you going to do with it? Nobody has been working on that. Either it's the old or uh, done as new, or it's the old done as a revival, which we're all dying or from. It's, it's just become a museum <laughs> now. Well, Footloose is just, you know, a 60s musical. That's all it yep. is. Yeah. I mean, it happens yeah. to be a lousy one, but it's still a, just an old show. Nobody has... And guys like Richard and, and, and his wonderful writing partner, David Shire, they're the ones who should be coming up with a new show. That's what you should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told myself back then. <laughs> <laughs> but on this exactly. subject, though, of giants like Fosse, I mean, there really are no enormous talents well, on the directorial Toon, level now. But well, Tommy Toon stumbled for a while. He's not really in the I game anymore. I don't know. Anymore. We had, you know, a year ago, we, we, we uh, introduced to New York a, a, a totally brilliant Julie Taymor, who, uh, you know, yes. so uh, who knows what we're going to be able to look back on after she's had 20 years of a, of a career. I mean, I, I've known her for a long time and followed her development up to this point, and, and she has always been uh, astonishing, always been offbeat, always been uh, fresh, and when she finally got a show that, that uh, allowed her to do everything that she did, um, in a in a in a commercial world, look, it's it's the, the it has transformed our expectation of what can be exciting in the theater. Maybe she's the a new wave you of know. the director designer. Well, and there's there many more be, where she know. came from, you know, which and, is the downtown theater. Yeah, we could have more puppet shows. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you have director choreographers, but you you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, uh, Graziella, write off Graziella for or look at no. what she did with Once on This Island, which is a, a absolutely uh, delightful and single and you're woven together into a single artistic piece. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't write off Susan Stroman when she does... Someone needs to give her a show to direct. Yes, yeah, I mean, and, and they are still young uh, in, 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 you know, creatively. They, they have lots and lots of work ahead of them. Um, but the other side of it, and, and uh, being a writer and, and sort of trying to <laughs> address the issue of new shows from a writer's point of view. I, it has occurred to me that we, in, in the musical theater, we're really in the business of astonishing people. It's, and it's very hard to do that, um, particularly when the form gets sort of conventional. You, want to, you, you really have to break it. All the great musicals that we know and love were astonishing when they first opened. They're now old favorites now, but they broke mm -hmm. incredible rules. Um, and uh, the rules were simpler to break, I guess, back then. It's very hard to take uh, a, a form, take the form now, and astonish people. Um, well, Julie Taymor, as you said, did it with The Lion King. She did it, and, and, and in a way, Jonathan Larson did it in, in, in Rent. Um, it, uh, which is a, you know, is a problematic show, but, but, but it has a kind of passion that we haven't heard in the, sh in the theater for an awfully long time. Um, you, want to, you want to take and <laughs> break the rules, and you want to have an audience sit there going, oh, I can't believe that that's, you know, that that's possible. Well, we hope that's what they're doing at Fosse. You're breaking the well, rules they do. and pushing they the do. envelope and <laughs> all they the do. other Well, things. you know, I mean, it, it works on, on a whole lot of levels. I mean, I, those, I, I, you know, as the director of the show, I'm, those are the issues that, that interest me. Um, it's entirely possible to go to the show, see this dazzling collection of wonderful numbers. As one <laughs> someone said, I can't believe it's one unbelievable showstopper after another, yeah. and go home a very happy person, having totally missed all of the things I've been laboring to do in the show. <laughs> right, you know. right, okay. we got we got to wrap it up, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Martin Gottfried, uh, biographer of Bob Fosse, and also his new book is uh, Balancing Act: A Biography of Angela Lansbury and Richard Mulpey, Jr., the director of Fosse, now at the Broadhurst Theater. The Broadhurst Theater. Right next door to <laughs> Chicago, the other Fosse show. <laughs> yes, we're going to own it. We're, we're going <laughs> to own got that block. The Fosse block. We're, we're working on the Majestic. <laughs> we can get the Phantom of the Opera out. We're right, have... That's right. That's fading, that one. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being great guests. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time on Theater Talk. And now we close with Fosse. I got
without your head to hold. The radiator hissing still, I need your kiss to keep me from freezing each night. I got a hot water bottle, but nothing I got to take the place of you. Holding me tight. Playbill Online is the official website of Theatre Talk and the home of the Playbill Club, providing exciting opportunities for theatre lovers. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you and good night. Mm -hmm.